Mr. Chairman, I move Article 3 for $100,000 for the purposes of a second school resource officer to serve Center School and Marsden School. I need a second, please. Second. Seconded by Ginny. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting hard here. We're going Mr. so Chairman, fast. Mr. Chairman, if I might ask uh, if we could have a discussion or a description of the essence of this uh, particular article. You may ask that. So we have a, it was moved by um, Tim, Second. seconded by Jenny. Discussion, please. Explanation. So we have a relationship that is defined by a memorandum of understanding with the Hampton Police Department. Currently, there is a SRO who spends most of his time at uh, Hampton Academy. He coordinates his work with the principal's office there, the social worker for the district, as well as the guidance department <coughs> and the central office. Uh, and the Hampton Police Department bills SAU 90, the Hampton School District, on a quarterly basis or biannual uh, basis for, uh, uh, for um, those services. Uh, the board uh, uh, has been concerned with security. Uh, we have recently uh, <coughs> made application to the state to secure uh, hopefully $665,000 of state dollars from the public school infrastructure fund uh, to leverage in making safety and security upgrades in the three buildings, Marston Center and Hampton Academy. Um, in tandem with that, the board uh, has had discussion about security over the last couple of years, and they would like to add a second school resource officer who will split his or her time between Center School and Marston School, so that we have a presence in those elementary schools as well as the middle school. Uh, the conversation that they had uh, at their last school board meeting with the Hampton Police Department, the chief and the deputy chief, uh, suggested that the costs, uh, which have been itemized uh, by the department, the costs to secure an additional officer uh, are just under $100,000. they are estimated at $99,895.74 uh, by their calculations today. Uh, that officer would be a Hampton Police Department employee contracted to the school district as is the first uh, to work with us uh, at those two schools and they would bill us accordingly and the supervision and employment would be within the, con the definition of that MOU that already exists. Thank you very much. I want to mention that in Sunday's Seaco Sunday there was an article about the anniversary of Sandy Hook and Max Sullivan wrote it, did a good job and interviewed several school systems within this area and um, security is number one for those children okay any other I might add to that that this is a priority of the school board it has been for mm -hmm. several years we have received several grants from Homeland Security re regarding surveillance and other tools for us to use in the, in the district as well as having a complete uh, review of all three schools in depth giving us uh, 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 strategies for around security and um, so this having that school resource officer in those two locations uh, only add to the security for all of our kids. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any? Go ahead, David. What do you do about the high school? Do you have one there? Yeah. That's a different SAU, David. We don't have any. We don't have any. We don't have any. Uh, do they have one. They do have one. They have a, a second SRO who's. I, I I believe that the relationship between the Hampton Police Department and the Winnicott School District is by MOU as well, and I believe they build them for those services similarly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, David. Anybody else? Seeing none. Yes, I do. <coughs> um, Tim. <coughs> How many years ago was it that we did our first SA, oh, SRO, School Resource Officer? Many. Uh, 96, 97? At least. It's been a yeah. while. 96 or 97 since we, when we first instigated it. Mm, has it been that long ago? Yeah. 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 Well, we went from DEAR Officer, then we went into SRO, so kind of switched over. DEAR Officer? Yeah, we had DEAR Officer. What the hell is DEAR Officer? DARE. 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 Oh, DARE. 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 Oh, dare. <laughs> and then from DEAR we went into, uh, you know, having the... Uh, I, I, think, I think our board made it very clear at our last meeting and over a number of discussions over this topic that given the climate and the culture across the nation, um, you never know. They never. You, there's no prediction to this. There's no um, certain signals that are going to prevent this from ever happening. But the board has felt very strongly that preparation is the most important thing that they can do, and they will always, always um, uh, lean to the side of safety for the kids. 
So we've had uh, one school officer, one school resource officer in play for a dozen years. 21, if you go back to 96. 21 years, okay. And now we're moving to a second one. We only have three school buildings. So I can see the next step is we're gonna have one for every building. Is that what we should anticipate? No. Why? Because we anticipate because of the age group and the duties that would be for that, that two police officers can cover the three schools. Two SROs can cover the three so schools. So the younger, ki the younger kids, because they're younger, are by definition safer? No, they're not safer, but there's probably less issues in a non, not security time. So for the, <coughs> the police, the, the off, SRO officer does a lot of things besides safety measures at the academy. Am I correct? Yeah, so one of the roles that our SROs have is actually working with the kids. They actually talk about all kinds of safety issues in the fall. They're talking about bike safety, um, stranger awareness. They, um, they develop relationships. One of the key points, both Chief Hob, uh, Deputy Chief Hobbs and Chief Sawyer indicated to the board was, it was so critical that you develop those relationships. Those youngsters now have really strong relationships with, with our SRO right now, Matt Robinson. And because of that, it really does change a lot of the behaviors as the kids get older because they do have that relationship. And I think one of the pieces to this is developing that. I think what Ginny's point is is that it's uh, less. there are less issues for them to interact in terms of um, stranger awareness is one that you do a lot of work with little kids. <coughs> but bike safety, they don't take their bikes to school yet, but they do at Marston, so they do a whole program on that. Walker safety, again, we don't have um, uh, little ones walking home by themselves. Uh, either their parents come, they're on a bus, or they get a ride home. So there are different roles in each of the buildings uh, that the, the officer takes on. At middle school, they're talking about drugs, they're talking about alcohol, that, that those kinds of issues uh, that are more prevalent, perhaps, as they get a little bit older. So the list of things that I'm hearing have got nothing to do with the, the uh, article that Max Sullivan put out which was speaking about Sandy Hook and some whack job coming in with a gun and, and, and uh, shooting people. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that on your right, list right, of right. concerns. I think it's part of that. I didn't I hear that on your list of concerns. Well, it is part of the concern, but that, that, is all, that is probably the main concern for having an SRO. So then why wouldn't you anticipate having it one in every school? Because at this time with meeting with the chief and the deputy chief and the superintendent, they felt that two officers could take care of the three schools equally mm -hmm. and be fine. The uh, new school remodeling has additional enhanced security features, I understand. Is that yes. correct? Correct. Significant. Yeah. When uh, Nate mentioned the grant that we just applied for with uh, um, infrastructure money that just uh, was newly um, designated for uh, public schools, uh, we have ne almost $250,000 worth of increased safety, including windows, doors, um, entrances, uh, alarm systems, security cameras, uh, the, the list goes on. So that will be part of our new project. But we also felt that that was a, a good place, that's a good place for all of our schools to be at in Center and Marston. So in addition to the $250,000 of enhanced security measures that are being spent for next year, implementation of next year, we're going to spend $100,000 every year going forward plus inflation, right? Mm -hmm in addition to what we're already paying for the first school resource officer. I got that right? If the voters choose, yes. Right. And so, um, you know, everyone likes to be reasonably secure. I certainly do. Uh, but there's a point of uh, excess to security. Um, <coughs> I, mean, I wonder where that line is. With 1,256 so, Children. I wonder um, where that line is. I don't think anyone can answer that any better than I can, where that line is. I mean, I could argue that you should have one in every classroom if you really want safety. But, I mean, let's not get absurd, right? So where is that line of a happy medium? I don't know where it is. I don't think anyone does. But I think maybe we might be moving a little bit fast. I'm done with my questions, but I have a statement I'd like to make. Make it. Um, I'm marginally not inclined to support this because of all the other money we're spending right now, and I think we're going just too fast on this. But moreover, I want to point out that it matters not how I vote tonight. 
In fact, it matters not how I vote on any of SAU 90's Warren articles, because SAU 90's governing body is uh, represses the voice of minority. So when anyone votes in the minority, your vote won't be on the tally on the ballot because you don't do tally ballot, uh, votes, do you? Which is a repression of the minority voice. And I object to that. And I wanted to state it. So I've done so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Maureen, you had a... Yeah, I'd just like you to speak, if you want <coughs> to, the, the drills that you obviously must have involved in, in security, right. homeland security. Mm -hmm. I know that you do that. I remember doing it myself. How often does that uh, take place? Well, in? we do, um, for instance, we, we do bus drills, so you know that, the safety on buses and yeah. how to evacuate the buses. That's both in the fall and in the spring are done. On top of that, we run 10 fire drills throughout the year where we have an, uh, an orderly evacuation of the building with teachers and children. But we also do, we continue that. We have lockdowns. Um, we also have lockdowns with evacuation. We also have, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of different things that we're doing and with them places now. places that they can go to. That if it's safe places that yeah. they can go to. We've yeah. already been practicing that. If you've been right. in town, you've seen them out because they were practicing that. Um, we feel that if it becomes routine for the children and for the teachers, Right. We, we empower our teachers to make <coughs> decisions because we're not always there with them or their principals. I mean, we have awesome principals. They're behind me, and, and, and Dave and Lois and Tim and their assistants, Nathan and Anna, do a fabulous job. But they can't <coughs> always be in that classroom or in that cafeteria. They're often in the cafeteria, but you know what I mean. They're not always in every place. So um, we've had to make sure that all of our staff is well-trained on knowing what to do without having Excellent. specific directions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sonny, you had a question? Yeah, I had a question. I raised it with Jimmy a while ago. When I go and pay my water bill, I noticed SAU 90. I was just, I asked Jimmy why you didn't set your superintendent's office up in Center School. I mean, it's half empty. Well, the, Center yeah. School is not half empty. Um, I, well, I, there, are, there, there, the are, there are uh, <coughs> there are very few spaces. We did look at that, Sonny, because we were trying to um, see what spaces would be available. We have seven people that we serve in that office, and our special education department along with our finance department, um, as well as the administrative assistant and Nathan and I. So. Um, uh, plus, we needed a place for meeting spaces. I meet frequently with the leadership team. Uh, the school board often uh, uses that as a, a, a secondary place for their meetings. And so it, it did not meet our needs. And as a result, there were only um, very small spaces available at center school, not even a full classroom. So um, I'm not sure where the thinking no, is that it's half full. It isn't. Yeah. So because you signed a two-year lease, and, you know, that seemed good money going for no real reason. That's what's mine. I understand. Because the, the other thing I noticed, your enrollment's still going down. Yeah. Well, the enrollment's kind of a funny, uh, a, yeah, a funny know. beast for us right now. When you look at the Hampton Academy, you would look at Hampton Academy since I've been here. That enrollment hasn't changed more than. Uh, a delta of about seven kids, seven to ten children. Um, where we saw the greatest reduction in enrollment was in the young ages, in the center school. And many of that, much of that we felt was young families not being able to afford the housing and not moving in. Things have changed uh, uh, in the recent enrollment reports. You'll notice that the enrollment <coughs> in the center school has picked up and so we're seeing more and more of our students coming back. And I talked to other area schools, um, Northampton, uh, folks in the area, they experienced the same thing we did at kindergarten, um, but now they're seeing um, an increase back in the enrollment. Uh, the state of New Hampshire just saw an increase in uh, births, uh, 1.7, not a huge number, but it was an increase, not a decrease uh, that we've seen over the last few years during the economic downturn. So I feel like we're, um, we're steady, uh, we're growing, but slowly. Okay. You know, I'm not trying to start a war. No, I know that, but I think your questions are, are, are good questions, Sonny, and I think that they deserve good answers, and that's what we're experiencing right now. Yeah. The other thing I noticed that when I went through, you know, you buried me on the numbers here, was that the, the teachers' contributions towards the retirement fund, 
it's much less than the police and the fire. You know, the, the retirement fund has got serious financial issues. You know, we don't just you know we don't set the rates. Those are set by this by state I law, yeah. and, and so I. I, I, I appreciate that there is a difference because the programs are different. Um, and, uh, and I want to go back and just tell you, we did actually write on the lease, we wrote a 14-month lease so that we could be out at the end of the first summer with an option to extend. So we're not, uh, we're not looking to stay outside of our schools any longer than we have to, thankfully. Uh, you know, there's, um, there's no real problem. Okay, all set, Sonny. It's up to the voters. So. Right, all set, Sonny. Okay, David. Um, I'd like to ask a little bit more about the school resource officer from my perspective. <coughs> I'm glad there's one in the high school belongs there. I'm glad there's going to be one in the junior high that belongs there. I'm also 100% that the one belongs at Center School. Those kids, are, you can be trained all you want, which they are. It sounds like it's in-depth compared to when I was in school. We didn't have anything except get under the desk. There were an occasion five had nothing to do with me back in the building. They just didn't want to see me. Anyway, but seriously, and Handy Sook what Handy, whatever. Sandy Sandy Hook. Excuse me. That's all right. Take your time. That person walked into that building with a gun. And if our officer is not there at that school, if there was one a similar incident, and there will the Marston. Two minutes is too late. One minute is too late, depending upon where they walk in with an AK-47, which you've seen in the news, or things of that nature. So I heard what Tim had to say, and I agree with the fact that we, it's expensive. But the bottom line is you're worried about kids. The kids at that school, I think, were all elementary, and I think there were third, fourth, fifth graders, along with four adults, teachers, and including the principal. So. I'm disappointed that this person will be split between two schools when in reality, in today's world, which is very <coughs> sad, I think we need an officer in each school full time, my opinion. And that, <coughs> that's the way I look at it. So I, I can't vote for this the way it is, because I'd want to see it, maybe you have to amend it or something, but I'd like to have one in each school. <coughs> Or maybe you can say, well, we'll do that next year. But maybe next year might be a year too late. I don't know. I hope it never, never happens. Obviously, nobody does. And, I, <coughs> and the person over there working with the junior high, this one person be doing a great job. Plus, what you did on the school buses and all that. Um, that's the essence of what I'm. So it's a question. What is your thinking, and what do you plan on doing about center school? Well, obviously, you heard that we share, um, but we also know that we have some. That's your long-time um, vision, is to share? That's the question? No, I, I don't think so. I think the board wanted to take it in small steps. I, don't, I think they recognized the importance of safety at all three of their buildings. They absolutely did. But th when we built this budget, um, when we worked on it, Nathan and I, and then the board spent hours and hours going through it, um, they were very sensitive to the things that were happening around them, too. They were sensitive to the issues that the town has, relative to their water and sewer and all the things happening here. So they felt like they needed to take a, a little bit slower approach with it. I think that um, n next year, given the, the, the work that we've seen this year, I, I, I expect this issue to come back up. As I said to you, it is their priority, and I don't see that as changing, David. I, I think they will continue to do that, but I, but I think that um, perhaps we we're all a little bit concerned about the costs that we would be asking for in one year. In this situation, I would make an exception to the cost mm -hmm. with, the, with the lives of the children. Well, I appreciate that. Period. Thank you. And I'm sure they do too, David. Thank you, David. Uh, Tim, did you want to say something else? Yeah, I do appreciate those who are making my very point, which is inevitably we're going to be going to one per school and who knows, maybe one to each classroom eventually. Who knows? But I would point out, since more references are made to Sandy Hook, that uh, Sandy Hook has, has done its reaction, and what they've done is they've encouraged and achieved a certain number of teachers. They will not specify the number and know who the teachers are that have received firearm trainings and have firearms in their classroom. 
to defend against the nutcake that comes in trying to shoot kids, which may be a more effective strategy than having a uniform sitting there who is easily identified by some nutcake who chooses to come in and start shooting people. So that's all I have to say. That's not a question. Thank I'm you very much, I'm Mr. I'm making Tim. that state. Can okay. I answer that? Uh, hold on, hold on. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Ginny? Yes, the school board did, in fact, discuss that very instance. We discussed it with, at the superintendent level. We also discussed it with the um, police chief and the deputy chief. We feel that the teacher's first priority and only priority in an emergency situation is the children. And if they have to decide between the children and a gun, we don't want to put any teacher in that position. So we decided against arming our teachers at this point. That it was a school board discussion that was taken long and hard, and we did look at that option. Thank you, Jenny. And I, I know that there are other things that you do for security that we're not going to discuss publicly, okay? So that being said... Yes, I would point out, Mr. Chairman, it is sad that any nutcase that might be watching is now aware that none of our teachers are on. Uh, okay. Any other comments? <coughs> Any other comments? Seeing none, those in favor of this article, please raise your hand. We have Ginny, Sonny, Danielle, Maureen, Regina, Steve LaBranch. Those opposed? We have David and those abstaining. We have Steve Henderson and Tim Jones.